Mr. CEO of Nickelodeon. Hey there, Gore Verbinski, and please call me CEO of Nickelodeon. I did. So, are you excited to shoot Rango coming up? Yeah, about that. You know, I know this is supposed to be a basic bitch kids movie. Please don't refer to it as that. Oh? Refer to it as a blockbuster basic bitch kids movie. I was wondering, though, if I could do something groundbreaking. Like? Like, have all of the actors physically act out all of the scenes. It's animation. We have stand-ins for that. But if it's the actual actors, it'll cost more and nobody will notice. You know, those are bad things, right? Trust me, every animated film will be doing it like this afterwards. I guess we can accommodate that. Also, can it be a surreal existential journey with a Raoul Duke cameo? Gore, we're Nickelodeon. We specialize in farting out SpongeBob and rebooting slash destroying the Ninja Turtles. But this can be a new last airbender. Oh, God! The show, not the movie. Oh, but you know, this is just an old Western version of the Liar Revealed story. Exactly, it's a brand new tale no one's ever heard of. Uh, you know that's one of the most overly used stories, right? Name one other movie that used that formula. <gasps> Avatar, Bugs Life, Chicken Run, Over the Hedge. Aside from the Shark Tale, The Tigger Movie, Galaxy Quest. All right, I get the idea. Wedding Crashers, Aladdin, Claws. You know some of these movies haven't even come out yet. How to Train Your Dragon, Madagascar 3, Oz the Great and Powerful. Okay, I'm hanging up. Go ahead, I'll keep going. Yes, man, Bean, Bushwhack. It's still avant-garde. Jacob the Liar, The Road to El Dorado. Oh wait, let me look up some rom-coms. Wow, all of them. Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic Guy, remember, so you don't have to. There's some cliches you might not mind, you might even prefer, and then there's some that drive you absolutely insane. These cliches vary for many people. I'm personally usually not a big fan of the chosen one third act breakups or love triangles, but I know plenty of people who like them fine. With that said, I don't really have a problem with fairy tale endings, comic relief, or meta humor, if they're done well. I know a lot of people, however, who are sick to death of them. I say this to emphasize just because a movie has cliches doesn't make it necessarily bad. I did a whole top 11 list on movie cliches I absolutely love. To me, a cliche becomes bad when it harms a movie more than it helps it. And one that's been done a lot better recently, but god was it a pain in the ass back in the day, is the liar revealed. When someone pretends to be something else, is eventually revealed he or she is lying, and everybody mopes and dopes through the third act until the obvious lesson is learned that the real person was more than enough. And please don't get me wrong, this trope has been done well. I'll even say there are several great stories that were told great because they knew how to utilize this trope. But man, when it's done poorly, it absolutely kills any momentum. People have to pretend this is a deep thing they're realizing, even though we're all ten steps ahead of them. It's treated like it's some remarkable twist we couldn't see coming, so they dwell on it for the entire third act. And sometimes it reduces what could be a mind-blowing film to... just a good film. <laughs> in 2011 and directed by Gore Verbinski, Rango had a surprisingly fair amount of hype behind it. To give you an idea of what kind of flick it was promising, here's the teaser trailer. Pretty hard not to say what the fuck was that! And yes, there are parts that deliver that kind of abstract surrealness. But most of the time, it's a safe by-the-numbers children's western with animals instead of people. But yes, when it tries something new and different, it is pretty new and different. So I'll just be honest, when I first saw this movie, I hated it. I hated how boring the liar reveal cliche was, I hated how textbook the characters were. But looking back years later, I do realize this was a very unique film. Enough where I do acknowledge now, this is a good movie. I just can't pretend like it's a masterpiece. With that said, I do recall people liking it fine. It was a modest success, both critics and audiences enjoyed it. It even won the Academy Award for Best Animated Feature. But for something that Verbinski was really building up as exciting and new, 
it sure does rely on a lot of cliches that makes things feel a lot more predictable and formulaic. There's so many strange Verbinski-isms that could have been a lot of fun to explore that are abandoned for what's fast and easy. But I don't know, am I being too hard on it? I can't act like there's a ton of kids' movies that are this weird and get away with a lot of stuff that most kids' movies wouldn't be able to get away with. Was I just hoping too hard that this formulaic western would be as weird as, well, this teaser promised? Well, the best thing to do is to take a closer look to find out. This is my probably too harsh, but I just can't help it. It's how I feel and I'm a weird-ass bastard review of Rango. So the film opens up pretty awesome. Honestly, most of the first third is pretty great. We see a mariachi band standing in front of the title, establishing while this might be different, at its heart it is going to be a western. Awesome, I'm all in. We are gathered here today to immortalize in song the life and untimely death of a great legend. Yeah, he's not going to die. Any film made by a family company in the past decade that says their main character is going to die is a fucking liar. Yeah, let's be a little harsher with this kid's film by saying it's going to be harsh and then pussying out at the last minute. Oh, come on. Wasn't I saying this was a good intro? The princess prepares to take her own life. It is far better to nourish worms than to live without love. Wasn't I saying this was a good intro? We see Johnny Depp as... I just realized this character doesn't have a name. Rango is the name he makes up for himself later, but at the start, he doesn't have one. I'm just gonna call him Boring Lee from Cats Don't Dance. He fancies himself an actor, yet he's a wide-eyed screw-up who has no idea how the world he's about to enter works, but gosh darn it, he has such a heart of gold and few jokes that work. Victor, you were wooden! My character's undefined? I know who I am. I'm the... I'm the guy, the protagonist, the hero. You know, maybe that's why he's a chameleon, so he can blend into every other bland 2011 family film character. Again, I'm probably being too harsh on this very average main character. I mean, these kind of leads are a dime a dozen. But look at this thing. Honestly, look at most of the designs in this. The more weird they look, the more memorable you think the personalities are going to be. And him? He looks like a dead Kermit the Frog shoved awkwardly into a shoebox. I want him to have a more interesting personality than Flake's theatrical brother. Car he's in swerves, and I guess they don't believe in backseat windows because he's yeeted out, and the conflict he said he needed to achieve an identity begins. He's on his own, and he discovers a squashed armadillo, played by Alfred Molina. I must get to the other side. I'm down to one layer of skin already. Pretty soon I'm gonna start seeing my insides. Not unlike what you've got going there. Okay, 2011 PG, very different from 2022 PG, and I approve. He's still alive and says he's looking for the spirit of the West, for he will show him enlightenment. They say he rides an alabaster carriage with gold and guardians to protect him. He wants to cross the road to discover him, as I think the idea is you need to be near death in order to see the spirit of the West and to be enlightened. It's a little vague, and I like that. It gets even stranger as not yet Rango starts to hallucinate, gets tossed around from car to car, and one of them is driven by the last character you'd ever expect a cameo in a family film. <laughs> I knew it. God, I wish this is what the rest of the movie was! The armadillo, who may or may not be a ghost at this point, tells him that if he wants to find water, he must first find dirt, which is cleverly revealed later to be the name of a town. He doesn't know that yet, though, and searches aimlessly in the desert. <laughs> Soundtrack by Rango, Arizona? <laughs> Are you trying to be right now? I should also point out the animation in this is pretty spectacular, especially considering it was done over 10 years ago. This is the same year that brought us Green Lantern, Hoodwink 2, and Mars Needs Mobs. This CG is pretty damn impressive. A lot of that, I think, is the textures and lighting, as the celebrity live-action references, or emotion capture, as they call it. Instead of motion capture, it's kind of emotion capture. Jesus, Hollywood. Doesn't appear to add that much. At least with Polar Express, the idea was to make these people look and move more realistically. To varying results, but that was the idea. Again, though, these aren't people, they're animals, and they're designed so odd, I don't think they need them to move that real. But I will admit, it doesn't take away anything either. Needless to say, a lot of this imagery is so surreal and otherworldly that it really does thrive when it just gives into the weirdness. Which it's continuing to do when he meets his female co-star, Beans. Not played by Helena Bottom Carter. 
You mean they're not conjointed twins? And is instead played by, uh, is it Isla or Esla? I better look it up online and see how other people pronounce it. Esla Fisher, oh, that sweet honey from Wedding Crashers? Uh, he seems trustworthy. And yeah, I know it's Isla. And she has a quirk that really doesn't tie into the story. She freezes whenever she feels threatened. At a delicate time of my personal development is an affront to my sense of- I think the only thing it does is give us moments that maybe haven't aged that great. <laughs> well, I've seen our current and previous president do this, so I don't see the harm. She takes him to the town of dirt, which at times can be creative, but other times is surprisingly underwhelming. What's fun about scenarios with little creatures is how they utilize their surroundings. I always love it in Rescuers or Arietti, all the various ways they use common objects as something else. Occasionally we get that, like cactus juice is literally a cactus and a Pepto-Bismol bottle is an outhouse. But most of it is just stuff in the human world except smaller. Like, who the hell is making small guns that actually shoot small bullets? Okay, not that many. I do give credit that Nickelodeon let Verbinski go so gooey and gross. I guess it makes sense when you realize this is the same company that allowed Ren and Stimpy in Batman vs. the Ninja Turtles. I kind of forget how awesome that can be sometimes. Who exactly are you? He pretends to be a tough killer named Rango, and even says he's responsible for murders he didn't commit. Are you the fella that killed them Jenkins brothers? Killed them with one bullet. All seven of them. I like that it's seven brothers because I'm pretty sure that's a callback to the brave little Taylor, which almost every liar reveal story borrows from. And they also give credit, this is one of the few burp jokes in a kid's film that gets a legit laugh out of me. After hearing half the story about how he killed seven men with one bullet. Bullet hits the shovel, ricochets back towards number three, and that's when the roof caved in. The full story would have been better, but half isn't that bad. Someone threatens him, and the only thing he can think up is eating his cigar. <laughs> I know this is a cartoon, it takes days to animate, but somehow that felt improvised. He's challenged to a gunfight, but the hawk that chased him before shows up and tries to finish the job. Luck works in his favor, though, as a tower falls on the hawk and everybody thinks he did it intentionally. Well, I think it's time he met the mayor. Let's hear it for Rango! Let's hear it for the three amigos! I mean Will Smithfish! I mean Oz! He gets sent to the mayor of the town. Again, little touches like this are great. But tell me, honestly, be 100% straightforward. Can't you tell from just this two seconds of film what the rest of the story is gonna be? Water, Mr. Rango. You got it, don't you? You got it. You may not even think you do, but just take a guess what happens in the rest of the movie and you'll be correct. The mayor, played by Ned Beatty, is pretending to be good, but the twist is he'll be evil. He holds power because he controls the water, he has an evil plan to screw everybody over, and he's gonna use Rango in his plan because he's popular, and the rest follows the liar reveal story already set up. Be honest, be honest, you got all of that from just that two seconds, didn't you? And look, a predictable story is not bad if a lot of new things are done with it. But like I said, the coolest stuff was in the first third. Now it's just this run-of-the-mill story with no surprises. Except maybe the stuff that never comes back into play. For example, what's this about? Have you met Angelique? Hello, beans. Hello, Angelique. Tart. Floozy. Trillip. That never comes back again, dames! When the people are given water, they do this weird dance. Even Rango asks about it and doesn't really get an answer. So, is this considered normal civic behavior? Mm-hmm. Every Wednesday. Oh, well that makes the bit work. Why are you dancing? Yes. Sometimes something will happen that's pretty funny. Like when these obvious robbers are going to steal the water and the brainless Rango accidentally tells them how to do it. The bank's being robbed! The bank's being robbed! There's also a funny scene where they ride off to find the robbers to epic music. Where are we going? That's hilarious. Like I said, scenes like this do give a bit of charm, but there aren't that many in between the stale plot and forgettable side characters. And there are a lot of side characters to forget. I don't remember any of these folks' names or personalities outside of this one with an arrow in his eye. I think the reason being there's an arrow in his eye. 
Even this child played by Abigail Breslin. You're funny looking. You're funny looking too. That's a funny looking shirt. Funny looking dress. You got funny looking eyes. You got a funny looking face. Strangers don't last long here. She has a great look and sometimes a deadpan sense of humor, but at the end of the day, she's just the hopeful kid looking for a hero, nothing else. You're gonna bring that water back, aren't you? Count on it, little sister. If this movie wanted new twists on this idea, they'd have her be the villain. That's the unconventional weird-ass movie I love to see. You'll be in charge of all tracking and finding the villains, utilizing your well-developed ingenuity. No offense. None taken. In 2011, 10 years from now, maybe. New Year means a new game to play for Disney December. I'm gonna be playing Spider-Man for the PS4 every Friday on Twitch. We have content six days a week, so come check us out. Hope to see you then. Rango gets a group together to find the robbers and keeps consulting with the Injun Crow. Pick up trail. Three men headed west. One blind. One with a large prostate riding side saddle. Depp studied his authenticity for when he played Tonto, who also had a black crow, and was directed by the same guy. He only got better after this movie, didn't he? Rango has another awkward as hell encounter when Bean freezes up again and he kisses her. We're still going by 80s college comedy rules, right? Oh, but it turns out she was faking it. I think. She continues her conversations the other times like she didn't notice it, so she wouldn't pick up on him doing it. So was she hoping he would do that while she was out? I can't figure out which character I'm supposed to be creeped out by, so I'll just say both of them. The following day, they find the robbers and dress up like a theater group to trick them. Have I mentioned yet the funniest characters are the band? I think they stay thespians. Thespians? Th that's illegal in seven states. How has Twitter not canceled this yet? <laughs> This leads to a big chase scene with gophers flying bats. Again, while this bit of action is pretty standard, it is a little creative. Seeing these things fire machine guns is pretty damn wacky, and I legit crack up when one of the bats just explodes. <laughs> it gets me pretty good. They capture the robbers, but discover the water jug was empty before they stole it. Best get to what the kids really want. Conversations about capitalist expansion. I was here before the highway split this great valley. Control the water, and you control... Begin everything. to appreciate the broad sweep. You attribute of divine power to what me. What are you building out here? The future, Mr. Wright. The frontier town, the lawmen. There's just no place for them anymore. I watched the march of progress. Yeah, is this where you thought we'd be an hour after watching that? Even if you're a little kid seeing this cliché for the first time, why would this be entertaining to you? Lex Luthor was at least fun to listen to when he discussed his complicated plan. This Otisburg spin-off isn't nearly as entertaining. Our new sheriff has been playing the hero for so long, he's actually starting to believe it. Suspecting Rango is getting too close, he calls Rattlesnake Jake, played by Bill Nye. This is another character that's written dull as a rock, but I'll give him this. He looks and sounds pretty intimidating. Hello. Brother, thirsty. Do you fear fangs? But we know better, don't we? Man, it's like every scale has a base in it. Listen close, you pathetic fraud. This is my town. Good thing Bill Nye was there as a reference, too. He moves exactly like a snake. See, wait, this was kind of dumb. He calls out Rango's lies, and right on cue, he leaves the town and sulks alone. And this goes on for five minutes. I know five minutes doesn't sound like much, but when there's no jokes, no unique spin, and it's just sulking because this is so dramatic and surprising, God, it drives me up a wall. I know there's a lot of people that have a higher tolerance for this trope. Jesus, I'm not one of them. Who am I? I'm nobody. To Depp's credit, this might be how he spends his nights recently. I will say the redemption arc is a little creative. He encounters the Spirit of the West, again, possibly on the verge of death. And it turns out to be Clint Eastwood. The Golden Guardians are his awards, and even though they couldn't get the actual Eastwood to voice him, oh, what, this was okay, but Rango isn't. Timothy Oliphant does a pretty good impersonation. You came a long way to find something that isn't out here. It's not about you, it's about them.
I also like that the idea is he has to check his ego, like it's not about him, it's about these other people he should help. That's what gives him his identity. Not necessarily what he thinks, but what he does. Had Rango been a more funny or interesting character in a less standard and convoluted story, this would have been a lot more powerful to me. But I will admit, it is still pretty cool. I also like we're never given an explanation of what he was. A hallucination, the actual spirit of the West, who knows? Even the armadillo is there, blurring who's still alive and who's dead. Beautiful, isn't it? Hey, didn't you ruin the pirate movies out here too? It gets weirder when these trees that look like Ents fuck Sneed start moving towards where the water is going, which is a giant city. Again, no explanation why these trees can walk or if it's a hallucination, it just sorta happens. And goddammit, I wish there was more of it. I want this movie to explain less, to think outside the box, to be that film you couldn't easily explain. But whenever it gets close, it returns back to its safe space of getting everybody to love him again. The suspense is terrible. No, really, it's terrible. Is there anyone who doesn't know what's gonna happen? He outsmarts them by having his friends direct the water to the town and shooting the snake into the air. But they capture Beans and force him to surrender, throwing them in the jug filling with water. Hold on, don't worry, I got a plan. Help! Yeah, okay, okay, it's another pretty good joke. Rango has one bullet left in his mouth, but Beans accidentally swallows it and freezes up again. One last bullet to kill one last outlaw. How bad does this look? I guess not bad enough. She spits out the bullet, which cracks the glass. I don't even think the movie cares anymore. And it washes up the bad guys. The snake takes the mare away in a surprisingly underwhelming climax, and the town is saved. But wait, what about that stuff about Rango dying? Although he's certain to die, perhaps from a household accident, the people of the village will honor his memory. Okay. That is so lazy, I kind of love the shit out of it. And that was Rango, a bland story with bland characters told in a massively creative way. I don't know if Urbinski made this film better or worse because I don't know what it was trying to be. Did it start out as a standard flick that was made more surreal or did it start out as a surreal flick that was made more standard? I'll totally admit I might be thinking too deep about it. After all, it is a kid's film with eyeballs popping out, characters swearing left and right, arrows through characters' heads, and when you add it up, an impressive body count. It's a little hard to stay too angry at a film that gets away with so much. But on the other hand, I do see what it could have been. And this definitely isn't a case of, oh, if you liked it, you must be ashamed. No, I love that you would love this movie. I love that something so weird and odd looking that also has drops of existentialism in it can get a wide release for a kid's audience. What can I say? I'm a weird guy. And when something comes along saying it's really new and weird, I expect it to be really new and really weird. And for an oddball like me, it's just weird and new enough. It's hard to say. What are your thoughts? Do you feel it's a risky kids film that snuck in a lot of naughty stuff he couldn't do back then? Or do you think it's a garden of ideas that was never given enough water? Whatever your thoughts, I think we can all agree this is a film that brings the good, the bad, and the ugly. I'm a nostalgia critic guy, remember? So you don't have to. Instead of motion capture, it's kind of emotion capture. Hey, Doug Walker here doing a charity shout out and the uh, charity this week was a recommendation, so thank you so much. Uh, it is for uh, Colorado Gives Boulder County Wildfire Fund. Uh, on December 30th, multiple fires broke out across uh, Boulder County. Uh, more than 75,000 people were evacuated. Almost 1,000 structures were destroyed. It's clear this will require both uh, short and long-term recovery efforts. So the Wildfire Fund is distributing $5 million in financial assistance to those whose homes have been destroyed or damaged and an additional $500,000 uh, to support the needs of evacuees from this fund. Uh, in addition, they will work with government and nonprofit partners 
to uh, disperse the remaining funds to support those impacted. So, uh, yeah, this is obviously a terrible thing that has happened, and uh, this is the one that has been uh, tweeted out everywhere in terms of, like, this can help, and this can, uh, you know, this is the best one you can donate to and give to. Uh, they even have a goal they're trying to reach. I think at the time I'm recording this, I think it's at $8 million. They're trying to reach $10 million. So, uh, definitely check it out if you can, and please donate if possible. You know, there's so many people have uh, been impacted you know, so harshly because of this. And uh, if you don't have money to give, please spread the word, just spread the link, uh, and see if you can help these people out, because there's a lot of folks that are trying to help, and you can be one of them by either donating or just spreading the word about it. So thank you so much, man. Take care.